Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, today we're gonna talk about the Futuristic Sounds of Sun Ra, a brand new release from Craft Recordings. Um, but before we get into it, if this is your first time checking out my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, so without further ado, let's talk about Sun Ra. Um, Sun Ra doesn't have a major place in my collection. Um, I probably have about 2,500 or 3,000 uh, jazz records and um, I'm still cataloging it, so I'm not sure exactly how many. But um, I don't have that many Sun Ra records. Um, you know, I tried to get into some of his music. I, I previewed it online, and it never really spoke to me. Um, you know, I think many people know, folks who, who follow me on, uh, on Instagram know that I'm not exactly in the space of, um, you know, free jazz or avant-garde. And I think some of those elements are found in a lot of Sun Ra's music, although not necessarily all of his music, right? So his earlier music was definitely more um, sort of swinging or blues heavy. Um, and and then personally, I found I find that there's more to enjoy in his earlier work, and for me, less to enjoy in his later work. And I just never um, sought out his uh, his records on his Saturn label. Um, you know, I just I'm, I'm not that big of a Sun Ra fan. Uh, so I don't know if that makes me, um, you know. Uh, a better, uh, you know, better able to to assess this record, or, or worse able to assess this record. Um, but I certainly don't have any preconceived notions of, of what I think it should sound like, um, except with, uh, you know, in, in, in this case, I, I do have the original pressing of uh, of this particular record. So this is the the futuristic sounds of Sun Ra. This is an original 1961 um, uh, pressing of this record. It is on the Savoy label. Um, you know, mine is uh, is not in the best shape, I would say, especially the cover. We've got some tape. There's like stains on the back. I actually had a, a very crisp, very nice um, copy of this that came in through a collection buy, uh, but I, I traded it away because it, it, Sun Ra's music is just not that important to me. Um, it, it, like I said, it's just never really spoken to me. Um, however, um, you know, there's there's a lot to enjoy on this record, and I was very excited actually when Craft Recordings decided to put it out because I was curious if I was going to uh, if it would sort of improve my listening experience. Um, so I did make a point of uh, of grabbing the reissue that just came out the other day, and um, let's do a you know a side by side or a shootout between these two versions and figure out. You know, I don't want to say like, you know, should you prioritize finding an original right because they're they're hard to find i mean sun Ra's stuff almost anything he has um there's there's collectors who want it um but but more i'm interested in um you know is there a difference did craft recordings do anything different with this uh with this album does it sound better and uh and so that's what we're going to get into today all right so to start out um i uh, i wanted to start with the original pressing of this record and i wanted to listen to it again and sort of refresh my memory of what the what the original sounds like before i uh, listen to the craft uh, recordings record um, at all um and i feel like i don't know i feel like just for my process it's kind of just important to re-familiarize myself i didn't want to feel biased i didn't want to um you know, to uh, to hear things maybe from the uh, the re from the reissue, and then be disappointed when I didn't find it in the uh, in the original. I kind of wanted to work, you know, with with what I was more familiar with. I, I guess you'd say. Um, so I did start with um, refamiliarizing myself with the original, and um, I have to say, first of all, um, I was pleasantly surprised. I think the last time that I picked up this record. Um, I was probably just in a different space. I mean, this was you know this might have been seriously like several years ago. Um, the last time I listened to this. Um, Generally speaking, I, I don't recommend keeping records in your shelves if you can't listen to them that frequently. But, but obviously, as I mentioned before, I have several thousand, and, and so you you know that it's impossible for me to listen to them all on a, on a regular basis. But, um, but I, I was pleasantly surprised. I think um, you know these days maybe my tastes have evolved a little bit, um, and I did really enjoy uh, this uh, this this record. Um, and there's there's a few things that um, that I noticed, and and actually these notes that I kind of um, these, these sort of mental notes. Again, I made these before I listened to the Craft Recordings one um, to sort of you know preserve their um, I don't know accuracy or whatever. Um, so I, I want to start with the opening track, and the opening track is called Bassism. Um, so true to its name, there is a lot of bass in this record um, in, in this uh, in this track, and the bassist is uh, Ronnie Boykins. Um, and I was actually really surprised that the 1961 Savoy record, the, it really captured the bass very, very well. Um, it's sort of boomy, but but also distinct. 
um, and and it's sort of um, you know it's it's uh, ever present throughout this uh, this opening track, and it's um, it just feels very dynamic. It's a really interesting um, a really interesting track, and. Um, yeah, so Ronnie Boykin sounds great. Um, Marshall Allen, when he enters with his uh, his flute solo, it's it's very bright. It's uh, again the, the detail around it was actually somewhat surprising. Um, I'm just I'm not used to Savoy Records sounding that good. I think it's probably because most of the Savoy Records that I have are from that like 1956, 1957, maybe 58 time period. But um, but obviously there's there's all this great music right that came after. Um, uh, especially late in the uh, in the catalog um, from folks like uh, like Bill Barron and you know and, and, and Sun Ra and others um, and, and generally that's that's kind of where um, you know the, the, the stuff that I that I really enjoy and does sound a little bit better and this is a good example of a Savoy record that sounds better um, so what else uh, the drums um, unfortunately on this opening track I felt like we're, were pushed a little bit too much into the background um, there's a, a lot of symbol work, um, you know, symbols um, on the uh, on this uh, particular track, and they seem relatively distant. Um, so that was uh, that was a little unfortunate. Um, I, I will say that the cowbell hits. Um, there's there's use of cowbell in this uh, in this track, and they're quite prominent. Um, I was uh, I was surprised at how forward they are in the mix. Um, the biggest complaint that I have. At this point in the in the record, just after you know, again we're talking about this one track. Sun Ra's piano is like borderline non-existent. Like it it's it just disappears in the mix. Um, every now and then you can kind of hear it coming through, but um, it's it's weird to have the leader be so pushed to the back. And I know that he's more than just sort of um, you know the the pianist leader, um, but but you know sort of the brains behind the operation, um, the arranger to the extent that there that there are. Um, you know arrangements on on some of this, but um, but that was really um, that was really disappointing for me honestly. Um, I wanted it to improve throughout the record, but it doesn't. And I would say that that's my biggest problem with this um, with this recording. Now you know it could be that Sunrod didn't want his piano to take a dominant role, and that's fine. But if there's musicians who are on you know in the studio being recorded, I feel like you should hear them. Um, and and it, Sun Ra is just lost. Um, so get, getting into the second uh, track, which is called um, Of Sounds and Something Else, um, I will say that the drums are more prominent than they are on bassism, and that was good. Um, but the piano, again, is just in the background. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's not dynamic, it's, it's muddy, it's soft, um, and it never really breaks through. Um, and, and it's not a problem with the overall track, because because there's there's plenty of bright spots in it, right? Like John Gilmore's tenor sax solo on this track is fantastic. It sounds great, um, and and I'm I, I just feel like I'm missing. Um, I don't know if it's balance or if it's again it, maybe it's just that piano that I that I want to hear and and I'm not. Um, I will say that I actually really love this track. Um, again, I'm, I'm like surprised as I've listened to this and, and maybe my tastes have changed, but I but I did really enjoy the track overall. I just think that there were some some missing elements. Um, one other example, and I think that um, that I'm that I'm going to cite is actually track three, um, which is called "What's That." This should be the point where um, Sun Ra has permission to sound a little bit better, and the reason why is because the opening of it is a um, very short but sort of uh, only piano. It's not really like a imp imp well, maybe it is an imp improvised solo, um, but it's only Sun Ra. Um, that should be clear. It should be, he should be more front, you know, front and center. Um, and yet it just feels like he wasn't mic'd right. Uh, you know, he, the, the, the piano. Um, so I was, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted here, right? Because uh, the music, it was, um, it, I loved that I could refresh myself with this album. It sounds great. Now I'm thinking like, man, I, I need to make sure I, I don't shelve this because um, I do want to listen to it more. Um, and sort of explore it more, and, and who knows, maybe I'd get more into uh, some of other, uh, some of the rest of his catalog. But um, yeah, there's just um, it, it just felt flat in some places. I think uh, individual solos, Marshall Allen and, and John Gilmore. I mean, there's some great guys in this uh, in this band, right? Um, they they did sound good, but um, but but the drums were inconsistent, uh, and Sun Ra was inconsistent. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at on the original pressing, um, and. You know, I'm, I'm recording this having also listened to the uh, the Kraft uh, recordings reissue, but I but I, I do promise that those are those are my notes from 
Um, not having listened to that yet, only listening to the original pressing. Um, so next, um, let's uh, let's get into the uh, the craft recordings reissue and find out did they make any improvements. All right, so um, just a couple of words up front. Um, what does this album look like? Um, it uh, it looks like this. <laughs> it is uh, you know it's the same. Uh, they did a great job preserving the original um, the original cover art. Um, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's great. It's uh, you know I guess the only difference right is the catalog number. So some of some of the things that um, the craft is changing is that while the original you'll see in the um, in the upper right there MG twelve one six nine that is the catalog number, and with Crafts reissues they well they have their own catalog number which actually I kind of think is um, is maybe helpful if anybody's like you know squinting at like an eBay auction or something and trying to figure out if something's an original pressing in the future or is it a uh, original but they've got their uh, their own catalog number um, up here on the right. Um, otherwise though I mean this is you know this is just what what craft has been doing right it's it's kevin gray um you know it's uh it's rti i don't know that this is a stoughton jacket i mean it's it's very nice it's like you know thick cardboard or whatever um it's not like super glossy but then the original wasn't laminated either so i don't know what i don't know what people expect um per personally um i will say this i appreciate um well sort of uh, designed and, and executed records in terms of like, you know, you, you obviously don't want it to arrive warped and you want the the, uh, the cover to look nice. Um, I'm not one of these people that sort of fawn over the gloss on a record and, you know, Stoughton jackets versus some other jacket that's done very well. I don't really, um, I don't really care. I mean, you know, again, I appreciate that, that Kraft does such a, a, a really high quality job with their reissues and, and I kind of leave it at that. But I know a lot of people care a lot about uh, about some of these details, and that's fine. You know, everybody collects uh, differently and appreciates um, different things, right? Um, one other note about this record is that uh, while it does have the original liner notes on the back, uh, which is great, it also has um, essentially new liner notes, not new liner notes, but like, you know, an essay, um, actually two of them, um, which provide surprisingly interesting information about this record and how it came to be recorded. Um, apparently, you know, these records, especially this period in Savoy, were essentially treated as like business cards. So you'd record this record and you would pass it um, along to uh, different venues that you'd be uh, performing at or that you wanted to perform at, excuse me, if you wanted to like get sort of added for several weeks. Um, you would, uh, you would pass it to, I guess, the owner of the club and they would listen to it and figure out if it kind of, if it was something that they wanted to showcase uh, at their venue, right? Um, so this is a little bit of a, um, Apparently this record is a little bit of a demo. Uh, so there's there's like a Latin track on here. There's a blues one. There's ones that gets a little bit more out there, a little bit more what um, what people then you know sort of came to uh, associate Sun Ra with. Um, so it is a pretty varied um, album, uh, and I, I didn't uh, I didn't know this stuff. You know, I mean I li I listen to a lot of music, I read a, I read a lot of liner notes, and I read a lot of books about jazz, and I didn't uh, I didn't know that. And so I actually really appreciate the um, the additional information. Um, so, so let's, let's talk about the music though, right? Um, so, um, it, interestingly enough, I, I actually found this really interesting because I, I'm not, uh, you know, sort of this, um, you know, uh, know it all in, in terms of like the ability to, um, you know, critique records in extreme detail and like, you know, my, my setup is still relatively humble, um, I suppose. And so, you know, how much can I get out of some of these audiophile records? But, um, you know, after listening to my comments on the original pressing, you know what my complaints were. So the question is, how does this one sound? Um, I will say this, the, um, the bass, as much as I enjoyed it on the original, um, is more detailed here for sure. Um, I've, I've spoken in, in previous uh, reviews where you talk about this sort of extraneous noise, this additional noise that isn't necessarily the notes, but it's like the plucking of the bass. That again is here. It's almost like it's almost like somebody's adding a track or like you know adding like a um, yeah like a new track on some of these records of like finger plucking or something. But no, I mean I'm I'm sure it's uh, I'm sure it's in the recording and it uh, was was interesting to hear some of that detail. Uh, the drums are brighter. Biggest thing um, that that I found right from the get go on on the opening track bassism, I could hear the piano. I was shocked. I was like, this is there, there's piano here, and it doesn't sound like they just turned up the volume. Um, on on what otherwise might have been a bad recording, no, it's like the the piano sounds really good. Um, so I was um, 
I was really surprised. And and generally speaking, my complaints are addressed with this uh, with this craft recordings uh, reissue um, because that um, that's something that maintains uh, throughout the uh, the record. Um, you know, funnily enough, I, I mentioned in the in the previous one that the cowbell was um, was pretty prominent. Uh, again, the cowbell is prominent here, um, probably more so. I think that if I listened to the craft recordings reissue um, first, I probably would have said, "Whoa, that's like." I'm not going to say the the quote, but like you know, that's that's like a lot of uh, that's a lot of cowbell, um, and and maybe they should dial it back. But funnily enough, I like after I uh, made that mental note, I went back to the original, I listened to it, and I'm like, no, it's pretty prominent here as well. So um, that that seemed to be a uh, intentional um, intentional choice. Um, so what else? Uh, there is more soundstage, uh, or you know, sort of a more robust soundstage on the other uh, craft recordings um, reissue. Um, but but I don't think it's necessarily significantly different. Um, I think the biggest the biggest benefit you really get here uh, with this reissue is that the piano is there uh, and it's interesting to listen to. You actually get to hear Sun Ra on a Sun Ra record, right? Um, even on that um, that third track, what's that? Um, where I mentioned earlier that it's it's really just uh, Sun Ra at the beginning. Again, it was like that, it, it was resolved. Uh, Sun Ra was much more um, present, much more dynamic, and, um, and I really enjoyed listening to it. Um, and so, you know, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with this reissue. Uh, I'm, I'm more excited to explore this record, I think, now, after kind of going through this process and thinking about it, right? Of, um, I feel like I wanna, I wanna spin it a little bit more and, um, and really digest it. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting to me because in some of these that I've done so far, right, we've, um, so far I'm trying to think, what, what have we covered, like Waltz for Debbie and, and uh, Kind of Blue and uh, Grant Green's Sunday Morning. Um, the, the modern reissue does not always win, right? Um, and so I don't, you know, want this to, you know, make it, make it seem like, oh, I'm just doing this for, you know, doing this for fun to, to always award either the original pressing or always award the, uh, the, uh, the reissue as being the better one. Uh, in this particular case, um, the futuristic sounds of Sun Ra, the craft recordings one just sounds, it just sounds so much better. I think this is a great way to, uh, to experience this album. Um, you know, they're, they're obviously a quality label and they continue to put out good stuff. You know, I've, I've mentioned in, in a previous video that I was one of the people who, uh, who picked up the, the Vince Guaraldi, um, small batch, um, simply because, you know, not only is is that a, a fantastic album. I mean, I'm such a huge fan of it. But um, they really do, you know, thus far have a great track record of extracting um, so much more sort of magic out of some of these old recordings. And so, I'm a fan. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, of, of this uh, reissue. I'm a trying to be a fan more of Sun Ra, perhaps. Although I understand that most of his catalog is completely out of reach at this point for me. Um, which is, you know, which is, uh, which is fine, I suppose. There's plenty of other uh, jazz for me to get into, but, um, but yeah, I mean, there it is. I, uh, I, you know, I think this is a, a recommend. I don't think that these are particularly expensive. It's probably not going to be particularly um, hard to find, whether online or in store. Um, and so, yeah, there we, uh, there we have it. It's, um, it's a great release. Um, so thanks very much for sticking with me. I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.